Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Patricia Morales, and I am the program manager for Maniola. For the past six years, Maniola has been supporting the future of agriculture through the talent development of Hispanic students and young agricultural professionals in two distinct internship programs, travel and virtual. We have built these internship programs to enhance USDA and RCS Hispanic outreach to increase the agency's bilingual professionals. Our priority is to extend the agencies across Hispanic communities, counties, and states. Internships at Manuela give students a unique opportunity to make connections with USDA and RCS offices, opening doors to potential future employment. In this segment, my colleague Molly Haas and myself will discuss Maniola's agricultural conservation internships. We will listen to presentations from past interns Francisco Sima de Villa and Carlos Espinosa about their experience and conservation projects. And hear from Jamie Marine, field office director, supervisor from Louisiana. We first started sound development program in 2018 with our travel internship, where we place college students in various NRCS field offices in the Southeast region of the United States. During this travel internship, our interns spend their summers gaining valuable work experience and exposure to the world of agriculture. Since that year, we had overall 53 interns in our program, of which 35 have been in our travel internship. Of the 53, 15% are working agriculture in agricultural related fields, and 25 are currently employed by USDA full-time or accepted to a pathway program. In 2020, we expanded to include a virtual internship in response to the COVID-19 pandemic to date, we have had 18 interns, which my colleague Molly has, will explain later in the segment. As of today, we're accepting applications all year round for three annual internships, one summer travel and two virtual internships in summer and fall. If you want to know more about our internship, please go to our website, latinofarmersusa.com slash internships. You can see information on past internships, their placement, conservation projects, and where are they now. You can also discover the internships, uh, learn how to apply, and see our frequently asked questions. Before I pass it over to Jamie Marine, who is the Soil Conservation Technician for USDA NRCS, and was the direct supervisor, supervisor for this year's Louisiana Travel Interns, I want to take this opportunity to talk to you about my experience working with USDA and our interns. This year, Molly and I were able to visit some of our interns working in Tennessee, Virginia, and Kentucky. During our visit, we saw firsthand the amazing experience both professionally and personally these interns go through when participating in our program. They not only grow as professionals, but also gain valuable personal experience. Our mission in Maniola is helping each professional love what they do, and our internship provides this opportunity. I have to say that for us, it's extremely gratifying seeing these young interns uh, grow into well-rounded professionals. We value keeping in touch with our interns. You will learn it you will later learn about our Cultivar Learning Network Advisory Collective, which promotes young professional Hispanic talent and accomplishments while connecting with agencies, Hispanic professionals in agriculture, student groups and student interns, and focuses on passing it forward. I will now leave you with Mr. Marine, who will talk to us about his experience working with Manuela interns. First of all, I want to say thank you uh, and thank you all for trusting me to uh, end in times and to uh, let me be a part of their of their learning and growing. Uh, 
and I know one of the biggest biggest uh, hurdles uh, of them being here and us being busy in the way we are and the way Puerto Ricans are. Um, we just kind of there was always a wall there, but we got through that, and uh, it's just a uh, it's just from my from my perspective, you just have to just extend your hand and just. Just open open yourself up, open the doors for them, and they'll jump right in and, and, and help you in any way that's possible and do anything and actually make some of the best friends you'll ever have. And uh, so that part of it was a, a hurdle and a learning experience for me. And uh, what we got to do with them, we, I took them out in the field and uh, let them experience um, the surveys that we do. The designs that we do, uh, they got to experience the. I don't want to say troubles, but the difficulties with uh, some landowners and some contractors uh, that may or may not agree. All parties don't always agree on what needs to be done or how it needs to be done. So they got to see that firsthand. Uh, we almost had a uh, dirt kicking episode in the middle of a field between the contractor and the landowner and us, but we, we got all that squared away. So we got to see the importance of um, having relationships with your landowners, uh, creating relationships with your, with your contractors, uh, whether they know you or not, you have to gain their trust. Otherwise, conservation will not be put on the ground. The way it needs to. Uh, so that's one of the one of the biggest things that I can tell anyone, interns, NRCS staff, the, the field office is a team. We all work together, and we take all the experts, all the knowledge, and all the resources, and we're the spearhead, and we put it on the ground. That's what we do. So. Uh, you can't do that unless you have a relationship with your landowners. You have to have a good relationship with the people you work with. Um, that is my that is the main aspect that needs to be taught and learned. Otherwise, you know, you're always questioned. You're always pushed to do something you're not supposed to do or that may not be quite right. Um, but if you hold your ground, and they'll, they'll eventually see, they'll, they may not trust you in the beginning, but once they see it done and how you are, then they'll, uh, you'll gain their trust and they'll, and they'll respect you for that. So they got to see that one of the biggest aspects of being a field office employee and working with these producers from all over. Um, just, yeah, know, Jamie, I have I have a question regarding uh, the experience that that I heard from you and also from the students, and that I think is is important for folks to know is of the three that were part of the program in Louisiana, uh, they two of them for sure were so uh, uh, clear that this profession is one that they would like to pursue. And uh, that's another aspect of, of, of being uh, day in and day out in an office with other colleagues, understanding uh, the, the difficulties, the challenges, but also the rewards. So if you can speak to also the, the, the connections that you make for them, because you actually connected them to a, a native Puerto Rican that actually has been in, in the area for a long time, a, a, a physician. Yes, uh, this friend of mine, Dr. Garcia, um, he's from Puerto Rico, um, and I guess he played a role, you know, one of the biggest roles of, of, of being the icebreaker between us and uh, maybe knocking down some walls. Uh, he's a dear friend of mine. Um, 
He is from Puerto Rico. He is a uh, he's actually my rheumatologist. Uh, he's a very very good doctor, and uh, I called him up. I said, "Hey, I got uh, some of your natives over here, and uh, or, or native Puerto Rico." And he got all excited. He said, "Okay, well, we're gonna do a, a traditional Puerto Rican meal." I'm like, "Okay." I have no idea what the what who I didn't. So, oh, I go over there and help him set up. And then uh, Adrian and Francisco come over. And oh, they started talking, speaking in Spanish. And I was like, okay, well, see you later. <laughs> but really, I didn't leave. But, <laughs> oh, he had a great time with him. We had a... Uh, it was, there were five of us, and I think we could have had 50 people with the amount of food that he took. And I can't even name all of it. Uh, but, and I talked to him last night again, and he is willing to participate in this, uh, doing this for other interns coming in. Uh, and he, he'll just open the door, and he'll, he'll do anything for us. So we have support here as well, you know. I mean, he gave a key to his house to Francisco and Adrian, just in case they needed anything. So, didn't have to ask, just come, here's the key. Wonderful. You know? Well, I wanted to also ask, uh, uh, well, thank you and, and, and your your wife that is also uh, very much involved in, in welcoming them and the experience was fantastic. We were looking forward to next year. Uh, we also wanted to uh, say that the experience in Virginia, Kentucky, uh, and many of the places that we have been uh, have um, given us an opportunity to to feel good about the experience that the students are having. So thank you for your time, Jamie. Thank you to the staff and the folks that have worked with you, and uh, we are looking forward to next year. So thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. My name is Francisco Sima de Villares Saga, and today I'll be presenting my experience with my traveling internship with Manoyola at NRCS. So, like I mentioned before, my name is Francisco Sima de Villares Saga. I'm from Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. I go to school at the University of Puerto Rico at Maya West. I am a third year student majoring in soil science, and I did my internship at Alexandria, Louisiana, and I worked for the Alexand NRCS Alexandria Field Office. So my internship duration was for six weeks. I started on May 23rd until July the 1st. My overall, I had a great experience. So. I had an, an enriching learning experience because I learned new things that I that are different. I learned things that are different than Puerto Rico, like basic soil surveying and soil classification, which I'm really grateful for the mentorship that I had. I had a chance to work with the state and resource soil scientists, and I had the opportunity to visit Lafayette and New Orleans and exposed to activities not common in Puerto Rico. So the conservation practice that I learned and employed were irrigation land leveling, which was done at the Robertson's farm, irrigation pipeline, which was done at Keystone. I also we did livestock pipeline, heavy use area, water, watering facilities, shallow water development, structure for water control, wetland, wildlife habitat management, and I also work with NRI survey, which is National Research Inventory. So now I'm gonna, I chose the top three projects that I worked with, and I'm gonna explain them to you guys. So this is the Robertson's Farms variable slope. So here we did an irrigation land leveling, and this is the slope design. This is this the rubber search farm survey in the 3D view. As you can see, the field is all uneven, which was causing water 
which was causing water loss and crops were suffering from ins ins water insufficiency. This is the cotton field design that we provided the contractors so that they could do the, the cotton field and level the field to the design grade of NRCS. This is the rubber sense farm virus variable slope design after the, the, the land leveling was done. So here we have three sections. Uh, uh, well, the field was divided into three sections called watering zones. So now the, the water can go to the crops in, in an efficient way. And now the crops can get 100% water and they will not be in stress. Before doing the land leveling, the crops were soft, where only 30% of the crops planted were getting water. So this, this, this project helped water, watering the crops and also not wasting so much water. So this, this is, a, these are the points surveyed in that field. We surveyed like over 2000 points with a, a great GPS. And then that's how we did the cut and all the designs and this and the views and so for the design. This is the equipment used by the contractor to level the, the field. And this is the field after being leveled. So on the second project, which I worked with is a keystone, is the keystone pipeline. This the new the existing pipeline is the red one. And what we did was we added the new pipeline, which is the blue one, so that the farmer could water a field that a new a new planting place that a new place that he, he was planting. So what I did in this project was I did this survey, took shots, and after I did this drawing and I what I was doing was checking out that the pipeline met specifications so that NRCS approved. And last but not least is the National Research Inventory. This is a survey done by NRCS on United States non-federal land to check out the trends of the soil, water, and vegetation of that, of that field. So here, this is what I did was dig a pit and classify the soil. I was helping the soil scientists in charge that day. So we measured, we determined the color, the soil texture. We, set, we did the horizons. We checked for the pH of each horizon and the consistency of the soil. So this is the soil crew that I worked with. And that was basically it. In conclusion, this internship was fun and a great learning experience, even more than I expected. Besides learning, I enjoy meeting the people that I work with. I would recommend this internship to any student interested in the Natural Resource Conservation Service. I would like to thank James Marion, Sean Taylor, Mitchell Newton, Brandon Waltman, Gavin, Ra Rachel Stout Evans, and Chad. Okay, sir. I am looking forward to going back to Alexandria NRCS next year as part of the Pathway program. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Molly Haas, and I'm an agricultural development specialist working with Manuiola on the talent development part of our Cultivar Learning Network project. I've worked for this company for close to three years, and I've seen our internships grow and develop into the successful programs that we have today. During the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, our company had to adapt to transitioning much of our material and delivery methods into online learning. As a result, we hosted our first virtual internship in 2020 with a cohort of 17 interns. These interns participated virtually by going through a prepared curriculum consisting of online lectures, assignments, and projects. The topics covered in this curriculum were shaped to support and inspire college students to continue their education in the field of agriculture and to also consider careers in the areas of natural resource conservation. 
The curriculum included four distinct modules, which covered the following subjects. Introduction to leadership, natural resource conservation, young future conservationist, and data and entrepreneurship. That 2020 internship was such, such a success that we decided to include a virtual internship to our repertoire moving forward and have since hosted three virtual internships in the past three years. We also intend on hosting two every year in the coming grant cycles. To date, our company has hosted a total of 37 virtual interns, and we are working hard to ensure that that number grows with future cohorts. We are incredibly proud of our interns and inspired by their work ethic and the things that they go on to do. They consistently show interest in learning and expanding their knowledge base on the subjects of natural resource conservation. I invite you to learn more about this internship by visiting our website at latinofarmersusa.com. And if you or someone you might know would be a good fit for this program, we invite you to look at our application page. Thank you for listening about this exciting part of our work at Manuyola. And now I will leave you with one of our virtual internship ambassadors from our most recent 2020 spring cohort, Carlos Espinosa Jr. Carlos will be sharing a short presentation on his experience with the internship, including details on the conservation project he completed as part of his internship. Thank you, and Carlos, now on to you. Good morning, my name is Carlos Samuel Espino Sapuy. I am a fourth year undergraduate student majoring in agribusiness in the University of Puerto Rico Mayagüez campus. And today I will be giving you my presentation, which I have titled The Troubles of Paradise. My virtual internship experience was an amazing and rewarding one, filled with authentic individuals, accelerating interactions and practical information. What I enjoyed the most was the visit to Finca Bienestar, where we had the chance to see the different conservation practices and interact with part of the Manoyola team and the other interns. From this internship, I internalized that a leader is made from experience, dedication, and communication. The objectives of this practice are to identify, locate, and eliminate weeds and noxious plants, to identify bodies of water, and to control weed growth and propagation. The deliverables are to identify weeds and not just plants throughout the farm, fumigate the heavily affected areas. The expected outcomes are to provide more space for animals, an abundance of higher quality forage, a safer environment for us and animals, and to control growth and reproduction of weeds. Herbaceous weed treatment it is the removal or control of herbaceous weeds, including invasive, noxious, and prohibited plants. Its purpose is to enhance the accessibility, quantity, and quality of forage. This practice applies on all lands except active cropland, where removal, reduction, or manipulation of herbaceous vegetation is desired. It should be applied to successfully regulate the target species and protect or improve the intended species. The farm used a chemical method to control the weeds. Big questions. Why do weeds appear? They appear due to overgrazing, compacted soil, bare land, and water-deprived turf. How do weeds spread? They spread through air, animals, be it by eating the seeds or by carrying the seeds in their fur, water, vehicles, and equipment that have passed through the weeds and aren't clean. When do you manage the weeds? They should be managed as soon as they are seen to avoid further competition in soil, growth, and propagation. What is weed control? It is the prevention of unwanted and invasive plants. Effects and consequences that weeds have can vary from detrimental effects on animals and or people, reduce carrying capacity of the land for domestic livestock, interference with agronomic crops, cause the decline of wildlife populations, and can cause the erosion of soil. The benefits of controlling them are to create a safer environment for livestock, wildlife, and people, to increase native plant species, improve forest quality for wildlife and livestock, strengthen wildlife population, plant diversity, and soil water availability, and to decrease allergens and help prevent degradation of rivers and streams. Some of the weeds and noxious plants identified in the farm from the least invasive were Lepidium virginium, Helitropium indicum, Sena occidentalis, Achirantes aspera, and Amaranthus spinosus. The more invasive species were Mimosa bigra, Circium arvense, 
cucumis mel, leonotis nepetifolia, and cestrum diurnum. The most toxic ones were Ricinus communis, Mimosa pudica, Asclepsia curasabica, and Cisus verticillata. The room was the equipment used to carry on with the practice, due mainly to the density of the weeds, the shape of the terrain, and the lack of manpower. The first treatment was in the mountains areas that took 28 acres, and it took eight hours and 50 mixtures. The second treatment was in the plains area with a total of 21 acres, and it took six hours and used 30 mixtures. The drone wants only stopped for refilling and by replacement. Time benefits and resource benefits. It takes less time and less effort to use. It consumes 96.6% .6 less water. It uses an inverter generator to charge the batteries, can be used to monitor livestock and fields, and improves crop fields, crop yields. Differences from tractors or other machinery. Not as limited by the land, uses no fuel, oils, or lubricants, can be used for irrigation, pest control, mapping, fertilizing, and seed dispersal. It does not compact the soil. It's a safer method of herbicide and pesticide dispersal and a cheaper and efficient alternative to crop dusting. The only downside it is it cannot carry or harvest crops. The results in the plain area in the left picture we have as we started the fumigation and in the right we have when we finished, it was two weeks after. In the left, Far left, we have before we started. In the middle, we have two weeks after the fumigation. And in the far right, we have a month after fumigation. What I gained from the experience, I gained knowledge about natural resources and the importance of conservation practices, the tools needed to have an organized and productive business, the opportunities available to us as students and as professionals, the skills to develop ourselves as professionals, leaders, and individuals. Here are the references I use for the presentation. And I would like to end my presentation with a quote from Jose Ortega y Gasset, I am myself and my circumstance. And I would like to acknowledge Carlos M. Espinosa Avila, for letting me undertake the practice with him, the MAO team for the experience and the internship, and Sara Teresa Spinoza Puig for pushing me to take part in the internship. Thank you for your time. Hi everyone, my name is Natalia Cañellas, virtual intern of Maniola, and today I'll be presenting you a little bit about me, what my conservation project consisted of, and how the internship helped me with my personal growth. So a little bit about me, I was born and raised in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I love all things animal and nature related. I'm currently a college student finishing my biology degree in Portland State University and I'm aspiring to continue my studies in environmental science. And my career goal after that is to work for an organization that helps local businesses and companies take a more environmental friendly approach. During my time in the internship, um, they taught us about different conservation practices and how they are used in our culture today. So the conservation practice I followed in my project were crop diversification and nutrient management. Crop diversification being um, when you plant more than one crop in a certain area and then you to, get to avoid um, these pests and other diseases and keep them in control. And then you um, plant another crop that's more resistant to them. So those, if they arise because of it, um, they are more, they don't damage your main crop. And then nutrient management, just to make sure that the soil is at its best for the crop and also that the crop is receiving all the nutrients that it um, needs for it to be at its best. Um, the purpose for my project was to show the importance and also guide um, aspiring farmers and in agriculture and basically anyone that wants to be like make use of their land or just wants to be more environmentally conscious when planting and having a mini farm. 
the expected outcomes we wanted to see from this um, project and the conservation practices that we implemented were that the, the disease um, control increased, so they weren't that dumb that much diseases and pests on that crop and on the soil. And basically to conserve our native species, um, which we use. So the plant, the farm that we used is, was located in Yabucoa, Puerto Rico. And the native species that we were trying to maintain and um, produce as much as we could, or, or for at least for the amount of acres that it was, was plantain crops. Over here, you can see some pictures of the farm in Yabucoa, Puerto Rico that I used for my project. Um, those are the plantain crops. And then um, you can see how the soil was um, previously be during it was growing and then afterwards um, it was. So I worked along with a farmer, um, a aspiring farmer and I basically learned from him and he learned from me. It was a great experience to, to have given the internship opportunity. During and after my participation in the Manuela internship, um, I learned a lot about myself and what my end goal was career-wise. Um, it helped me show what I was like show me what I was passionate about and show me that many people had similar um, goals and similar interests as me. And it also helped me set new goals, like helping people learn about conservation practices and how to implement them in their lifestyle. And also helped me grow as a person, showing me like what which type of work environment I work best at. Um, I feel like that's something very important that people, you know, sometimes struggle with knowing and that's what best fits. Um, with you and what works so you can like be happy with what you work with and i was definitely happy working with um the mariara people and above all it was a great experience i learned i met a lot of new uh great people that loved the environment and had a really a passionate feel about it and just made me love it even more and work like towards that feel and being the best i could be um at it Thank you all for your attention. This is my contact information. If any of you have any questions relating my conservation project or even um, information about me, I'll gladly, um, I'll gladly um, respond to them. And if anything else uh, arises from it, that's great too. Um, I would like to thank Manuyola for the great um, internship opportunity that they gave me and for letting me present myself in this symposium. Have a great day, y'all. Hello everyone, my name is Carolina Sanabria Colon and I am very grateful to have been invited to the symposium today and to be able to share with you my presentation on sequestration of CO2. Who am I? Well, my name is Carolina Sanabria Colon again. I'm from Salinas, Puerto Rico and I'm currently studying agricultural education and agricultural and environmental system at the University of Puerto Rico in Mayaguez. My overall experience from the beginning and internship has always interested me. The classes that the leader of Maniola got me were essential for my development as a future agronomist and to be able to carry out my final project. I was able to interact with people from the different places, and I was able to practice the English language. Apart from the classes, my favorite part was going to the file, getting to know all the interns, and being able to, to do what we learned in the classes together with the leader. Since it started, it has been quite an experience, and there is still more to learn about my conservation project. I conducted research on how we can sequester CO2 from the atmosphere, since it is one of the most hardest gases with 13% CO2 produced and 70% various other gases that are less than CO2 in quantity. 
after my research, I interviewed 15 people about the climate problem situation. I was able to integrate what I learned into my project, and I was able to observe and classify the answer according to age, generation, profession, different economic level, and more. Here, we can see four topics, and these topics summarize the response of the 15 participants. The topics are regularize the conversation, adopt conservation practice, change your lifestyle, and educate the public about the negative impact on the environment. The first topic, regularize the conversation. 15 people got their answer to the climate problem situation. The second topic, adopt conservation practice. Some already do so and others did not know how, but many are interested in learning about and implementing conservation practice. The third topic, change your lifestyle. They are interested in knowing what method they, they can use, even if they are not farmers. The topic number four, educate the public about the negative impact on the environment. When the information was given to them, they asked to know more about the topic of CO2 sequestration from the atmosphere. How did the internship contribute to your growth? Well, Maniola helped me identify what I really want to do with my future. Also, I learned about the impact an agricultural company can have with its potential to seek help develop and above all educate people as farmers and students in order to create a multiply effect. Leaders helping leaders. Thank you everybody for your attention and have a nice day. Hello everyone, I hope you're all good. My name is Joan Graniela and I will be talking about my experience as a Manoya Ola intern working in the Natural Resource Conservation Service. For a bit of an introduction, I am a college freshman and I just started a bachelor's in industrial engineering in the University of Puerto Rico. And I plan to do all my extracurriculars and extra courses in environmental engineering and conservation. I am also from the west side of Puerto Rico, from a town called Cabo Rojo. This summer, I was in the state of Louisiana. I had never been to Louisiana before, but I got the opportunity to be there for six weeks from June 13 to July 22nd working beside great professionals in the Alexandria Field Office of the NRCS. My overall experience with the Manuela internship was great. It granted me the opportunity that was not only my first work experience, but it was also the first professional opportunity I got to dive into my passions. It taught me how to create change by helping the community and the planet at the same time. And it gave me a new perspective on how, as an engineer, I can make realistic and helpful solutions for this process. But if I had to pick one word to describe my whole experience, it would be impactful. And I will show you why. These are just a few of the highlights of my work during these six weeks. The first one that we see here is that I learned about the work that NRCS and USDA does, its importance, short and long term, and the science behind our, our work. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't know much about the agency before this, but it was really refreshing to learn about their service, their impact, and overall being part of it. Another big part was doing surveys and getting to meet with landowners and the community that qualifies for the benefits. And I can't forget about my third highlight because I got to learn and explore different conservation practices 
and I even participated in a soil survey NRI that is the National Resource Inventory. And another impactful thing for me was that I ended up doing my own little NRCS intern guide with Manuela. This just started as me trying to organize the information I was learning and then realizing it could be helpful for future interns. Here you can see a preview, but it consists of 18 pages of great and useful information. I'm almost done, but I couldn't left without saying three more of the highlights of this experience in the travel internship. The first one was teamwork, not only with other interns, but with other offices and agencies, and I can assure you that that was great for networking. The second one is the adventure and going out of my comfort zone to a new place with a different culture and environment, but I love to see the diverse flora and fauna, learn new things, and I even got the delight of learning about sugars and experiencing a few of their bites. And all of this ended up in growth, not only professionally, but personally as well. And yeah, my one word of description keeps being impactful because I know it changed my life and will have positive consequences in my future. As a college freshman, I never imagined that there were opportunities like this for me and having this experience so early in my professional journey is very impactful. And now you can see a few of the photos I took during this experience. And I just wanted to say thank you for watching and a special thanks to everyone that made this experience possible. Eh, mi nombre es Javier Medina. Hello to everybody. I hope you had a nice lunch. My name is Javier Medina Sanchez and I'm currently working for NCSR in Washington, Virginia. I'm going to be moderating this conversation, this Q&A with the students uh, that completed the internships. Just to give you a little bit of background, I am part of the Cultivo Learning Network. Specifically, I'm part of the advisory collective in which we are focusing on helping farmers to be able to create videos so they can do outreach, and help farmers with the different practices around conservation that are part of NRCS and outside of our NRCS as well. So they can know how to put them into practice and also how to be able to start their own business in agriculture. And so they can get more information about the different alternatives. So I started in 2018 with Mano Yola and I have continued to work with them throughout the years. And here we are. Currently together, I have a bachelor's from the University of Puerto Rico in general agriculture and a master's from Ohio State. Without further ado, I will go ahead and begin to accept any questions for the students. And let's begin with a question that we have for Carlos Espinosa. This is the following question. What type of drone did you use for your operations? to be able to uh, do the work that he did. Hello to everybody. The drone that we utilize it was is the kind that we use in agriculture, specifically for being able to help with fertilizers or pesticides. Thank you. Do you know what type of herbicide you utilized for this operation? Yes, grass and X, which is an herbicide that is specialized that it only affects uh, larger leaves. Okay, thank you. And you applied it in how many acres? Uh, 21 cuerdas was, and then another one was 28. 49. Thank you, thank you so much for your response. So who has any other question? Anybody has, if you have a question for Carlos, please put it in the chat or better said in the Q and A. 
If you don't have any other question, then I'm going to go to the next one, which is going to be for Natalia. Natalia, how did you select the questions for your study? Thank you for your questions. Well, the questions came about because we wanted to do something very local, very relatable to Puerto Rico. So I wanted to choose a plant that was very native, such as the plantain. And we wanted to see what we could do so that the Puerto Rican soil continued to be very fertile and good for agriculture, so it could continue to be that way. And so that we can continue to get all the necessary resources to be able to produce as much as we can. In that, uh, especially particularly in that small segment that we're working with. So I was uh, working in a farm with a small farmer that was just beginning. And it was a very special moment because he was just beginning in this field. He didn't have a great deal of experience. So I was able to share with the different conservation practices that I've learned about that he could actually implement uh, there in his farm. Thank you. Thank you so much for your response. We have another question over here. It's the following. You mentioned that you worked with rotation of plantain and diversification of crops. What other crop did you utilize for that particular activity? A plantain, and we also used some batata, which is a type of sweet potato. And I was looking for crops that were sort of resistant to pests. And I wanted to find one that was resistant. And, you know, we found that the sweet potato was quite strong or resilient, and the roots don't allow them to get very affected. So that's why we chose this one. So in those moments where the plantain could not uh, be very successful, then we would use a sweet potato or patata. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for your response. We do have another question about your project. As you know, in Puerto Rico, the plantain is one of the main crops in the island. Have you seen that some farmers in that area have chosen to utilize the diversity of other crops? Well, yes and no. In the area that I was working in, not necessarily did I see any other crops that were being grown, but I have noticed that if they are growing plantain, they also grow other native plants and products. I don't know exactly which ones right now, but for example, in Puerto Rico, uh, we have also a plantation of sunflowers that have a seasonal sunflower and they're quite beautiful as well. Thank you for your responses. If anybody else has any other question for Natalia, we ask that you please go ahead and put it in the chat. And like Nolo is clarifying, for those that are participating from other countries, the batata is also called camote in some places. Just so you know that we're talking about the sweet potato, but it's called batata or camote. Thank you so much for answering the questions. We do have a question for Caroline Sanabria. This is the following question. Which methods did you utilize to be able to examine this capturing of carbon? Hello. The methods that we utilized were hypothetical and it was implementing uh, planting trees that can really uh, capture a lot of the carbon, like the coconut palm, which can really absorb quite a bit. And we have a, also a crop that's important because it can also repair the soil and bamboo because the bamboo can capture two tons for seven years, in just seven years. Speaking of those crops, we do have a question 
that is in line with that, which is, did you notice any farmers that are adopting practices to be able to mitigate and capture a carbon and, and which ones would those be? The ones that participated from my project, they were utilizing, well, a variety of different practices, but the one that's most common is terraces, paths, and they utilize this to be able to minimize the environmental aspect there locally, also ponds. That's good, you were able to see the different practices and compare them in terms of like what they actually had versus what you studied. Anybody else have a question that you would like to ask for Caroline? Please send it through the chat. And if not, we're gonna continue on and pass on to Joanne. Joan, here's your question. You mentioned that you were working with NRS, uh, CS surveys. Could you please describe what that process looks like and what does it entail? Yes, of course. Hi, good afternoon. Well, we had the opportunity to be able to work with soil scientists, biologists, and other great uh, people that were doing internships. And it was a lot of work. We worked all day long, but what we did was to be able to divide up the terrain that had been assigned to us. We divided it into four. We took pictures. I think it was 20 inch rectangles that we did. And we took samples and we identified the soil and the different layers that it had. After that, we did visual observations and we identified the diversity in the plants every three feet. It was very interesting that part in particular because we we're able to compare it with the vegetation that we have in Puerto Rico. There were different flowers, maybe the different flower, but in a different color that I had never seen before. So this type of observation really made a great difference. And something that I also liked a lot was that at the end we spoke as a group, we analyzed our work, and the conservationist consultant spoke to us about the importance of this service and how it's really helping financially and to the soil health and just the social aspects of this area. Perfect. That's great that he had that opportunity to be able to see the different aspects and to be able to compare. I think you were in Louisiana, so you were able to compare what we have in Louisiana versus in Puerto Rico. So it sounds like a great comparison. Any other question that you may have for any other participants of the intern, you can put them in the chat. If you also want to connect with them, then we can also, any question that you have later on, we can also send it to them. We do have a question over here. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good, doing good. Well, speaking about the cultural adaptation, in many cases like yours, it was new states, rural areas, so tell us a little bit about that transition. I was in the area of Louisiana. I had never been in Louisiana. The closest I've been to that had been Texas. So it was interesting. The food is different. The vegetation is different. I had like all these fireflies around me. And I am a very observant person about the environment and I could see raccoons or other types of animals that we're not used to seeing, perhaps a venomous snake <laughs> and the crops also, they had a corn. I had never seen that before. So definitely the cultural experience also contributed and enriched my satisfaction with the internship because not only are you learning about the work, but you are really sort of changing your perspective, like learning a new perspective. I think it's, it was wonderful. Excellent. 
I see that we have a question in the chat and I think it's open, open to anybody. So any of you can answer it. So the question is, what is suggest for Hispanic agriculture to be able to successfully implement the NRCS programs? <laughs> any of you can answer that. <laughs> I can be brave enough to answer it, but I don't have a great deal of experience, but I would say that the education is key. So we need to share more about the programs. I apologize. So having more initiatives like the ones that Mano Yola are doing, we can then share more information like this because I did not know about the work of NRCS. I only knew about the USDA here and there, but I didn't know in, with you know certainty exactly what they had. But now I know this and I'm trying to share this information in my community. So education is very important. Thank you. I completely agree. Anybody else want to respond to that? Well, to complement to what uh, John said, I think that you have to be open to new practices that may come up because we are living through moments that uh, are very important and we can really take advantage of these things and to really take all these different factors into account so we can do conservation instead of abusing of the resources. So to always be willing to learn and to learn about different resources and conservation practices that are being offered. And of course, uh, everything that NRCS is offering as well. Completely in agreement with your comments. We do have another question over here. After your experience with the internship, how interested are you in agriculture as a profession? That's a good question. Honestly, I think the internships really expanded not just our knowledge, but the love that you can develop towards agriculture. So for me, now more than ever, I really want to work with the land and with the resources that we have. So I would say that, yes, I am very willing to dedicate my life to agriculture. And if I weren't able to continue, then at least I would work for NRCS or an organization that could work in providing help to agriculture and to farmers. Anybody else want to answer that question? Like many of you know, I am a student in my first year of college and I'm studying engineering and I've always been very passionate about the environment, but to be able to have this experience just confirmed that what I want to pursue is that even though I'm in the area of engineering, I want to combine that with agriculture and with conservation. So definitely, I would say that it had a strong positive impact on me. It's nice to see young students like you that are motivated to be involved and continue to be involved in agriculture and to continue to explore and learn and also, of course, share it with others, which is what you're doing. So with that, we're closing with the section of questions and answers for our interns. And now we can continue with the next part of the program. 